I absolutely love this story. Now, uh, a young man by the name of Josh went to a flash rave in London, and uh, there were about a thousand teens there. They're having a good time. I'm sure that there was probably some drug use there. <laughs> you think? And uh, at some point, a fire alarm goes off, and Josh took it upon himself to try to rip the fire alarm off so it would stop ringing. Well, as he was doing that, he got his finger caught. He basically moved his arm down, and he lost his little <laughs> finger. Now, any normal person would freak out in that situation, but not Josh. He wanted to party on. Let me give you his exact quote that he gave to the press. He said, the fire alarm started going off, and everyone was like, rip it off, rip it off. So I thought I'd give it a go. <laughs> It's fucking insane. So I thought I'd give it a go. I was completely sober at the time. I jumped up. I don't believe that he was sober. Grabbed it, <laughs> and my little finger got caught in, in the case because it was all broken. And as I came to rip it back down, my little finger got ripped off completely. I look at my hand, and my little finger was gone. Uh, the bone was sticking out, and I was in so much pain and shock that the first thing that hit my head was the beat and the bass. <laughs> the bass was hard, so I just ripped off my top. Uh, wrapped it around my finger and uh, tried tied it up as tight as I could and uh, skanked it out for half an hour. My mentality was, it's only been here for an hour, or I've only been here for an hour. I've paid 10 pounds for this night. I've lost my little finger. Am I seriously going to go? Nah. I'm gonna skank until I can skank until I can't skank no more. I, I love this story so much. He's crazy. My reaction would not be the same, but I want to know what you guys think. Uh, Leanne, make your point. Dude, sk skank yeah. and you're not on drugs. You're sober. Give me a break. Yeah. What kid goes to a rave and doesn't do something? I mean, yeah. I, sober. Maybe he wasn't drinking alcohol, but come on. And then to keep going after his little pinky. And then I heard later on that like a group of other kids that were you know drugged out were like tossing his pinky around for sport. Oh my God. Like, they found it, but I do not think it was successfully reattached. You know, the, please. the no, best part of the story is that he makes the point that he paid 10 pounds for this. <laughs> I mean, because he's going to get No, I mean, I, mean I, 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 maybe I really don't understand the, like, the currency exchange level here, <laughs> yeah. but I thought it was, like, something around $15. It I don't, is. I don't know if I would necessarily just sacrifice a part of my anatomy for 10 pounds. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree so, with so you. So, again, I don't think he was in his right mind. Yeah, I think he was probably mm -hmm. on MDMA. Yeah, something. Th it, that exactly. sounds like MDMA to me. But it's funny because as I was uh, looking at this story or reading it, I was thinking about uh, my Co Coachella experience, this past uh, Coachella that happened. And um, I had two friends with me that did MDMA. And it's funny because I was like the grandma of the group because I've done so much research on it that I know what the drug does to your mm. body. And so there was one point where I looked at them and I was like, listen, Listen, guys, you guys are high on MDMA right now, and you can't feel it, but you probably have to urinate. So make sure, <laughs> make sure you go to the bathroom and make sure you urinate because if you don't and you hold it in all day while you're drinking all that water, you're gonna get a urinary tract infection. You're gonna get sick. And, and they you were just, just can't like, enjoy the rest of Coachella. <laughs> exactly. Come on, dude. <laughs> and they were like. Why did we bring her with us? <laughs> but you know what? No one got sick, so snaps to me. See, you exactly. Go, you go, girl. Thank you. So here's the question. You're the grandma, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So have you ever had a I don't give a fuck moment, Matha? <laughs> Um, you know, Leanne and I were talking before coming here, and it's really funny because both of us are usually sober all the time. Yes. I don't drink. I hardly ever. I've had maybe like a couple sips of alcohol. And um, mine did involve being at a party, well, actually more of a bar, and I jumped on a bar top and I started dancing because I heard the percussions, Arabic percussions, started belly dancing. Oh, yeah. And I thought that because I was providing free entertainment, exceptional free entertainment, <laughs> that I could put my bag on the bar top and that it would be fine in New York, in Alphabet City, <laughs> but it turned out it wasn't the case, so my phone was stolen, there were four, uh, $400 worth of calls made to Columbia, oh my, <laughs> my keys to my apartment were, were in that bag, <laughs> everything was gone, and so for but my for my five minutes of pure euphoria, that was worth it. Oh, wow. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, me, I just, I, it, because we were talking about it, I'm totally sober, I've never even smoked a cigarette, I've never done a drug in my life, I've had alcohol, but like I have reactions to it so I mean I haven't probably had a touch of alcohol in five years you know mm -hmm. um, but I like to do things like jump out of planes and drive race cars at 200 miles an hour so every time like I get ready to jump out of a plane it has to be an I don't give a fuck moment because I know I could die oh you know gosh, and it's just one of those crazy. things where I just put my life in somebody else's hands and I'm like well if today is the day it's gonna go at least it's I'm controlling it and not I'm not being you know hit by a car jumping a curb while I'm running down Crescent Heights
Wow, that is incredible. I don't know if I could ever jump out of a plane or, uh, you know. It's insane. And yeah. my husband's a pilot, and he's like, why would you jump out of a perfectly good plane? <laughs> That's hilarious. Seriously. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, you know, I'm crazy. So... Well, my I don't give a fuck moment actually happened fairly recently. I've had many, um, but I took the trip to Spain and uh, they have lots of topless beaches there. Ooh. And here in the United States, <laughs> of course, like we're very um, conservative. conservative. Yeah. yeah, we're very conservative with nudity, especially. We look down upon women for some reason if they're too like open with their sexuality or whatever. So I was like, you know what? When in Rome, I'm, <gasps> I'm here at a topless beach. Ooh. I took it off. It was my I don't give a fuck moment. And there was something really liberating about it. And yeah. it's also really cool to be in a place where like breasts aren't really that big right. of a deal. No yeah. one really cared. Exactly. So it was nobody great. was like staring at you. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Were you in Ibiza? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And they yeah. rave until like 10 the next morning. Yeah. So I mean. The raves are not my scene there, right. but I definitely love the beaches. Beautiful people, beautiful place. Awesome. Well, my, my mom um, used to, she grew up in Cannes in the south of France. Uh, so people don't, I, I mean, Cannes. my background is that I'm Arab, but people don't realize that my mom used to just buy me bikini bottoms because that was how you went to the beach wow. in Cannes and Monaco. Right, you didn't need to spend no, the money no. on the top. top. <laughs> they never really sold the top. That's so. amazing. Awesome. <laughs> well, next it. time you go to Spain, and just buy the bottom. Just take the bottom. <laughs> of me. Yes, exactly. Well, tell me what you guys think. Have you had a I don't give a fuck moment? I really want to hear about it. Remember, we do videos where we read some of your responses. So if your response is particularly good, you might get a shout out on the show. We look forward to hearing from you.